In this video, I am going to teach you all how to completely automate your nuclear reactor in HBMs mode. Now this video is going to be divided into two parts. Part 1 is going to include automating fuel insertion, waste extraction, waste processing and some other stuff. And part 2 is going to include making a siren system which goes off as soon as the temperature of your reactor reaches a certain threshold and also automatically shutting down your reactor before it can melt down. And this all can be achieved using the reactor remote control block. Now other information that you want to can be located in the pinned comments down below. And also this video is going to contain chapters and the mod list is also in the description down below. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, so let's get started with the basics. This is the normal nuclear reactor and as you might have noticed, it has 4 reactor access hatches on all 4 of its side. The reactor access hatches are pretty useful but what they can do is get nuclear fuel in the reactor and also get depleted nuclear waste out of the reactor. For that, we need to basically upgrade the reactor access hatches. And once they are upgraded, they can be made into the reactor fuel inserter and the reactor waste ejector. Now the fuel inserter is made using the following pattern. 4 pieces of concrete, 2 motors and 2 copper plates with a reactor excess hatch and the reactor waste ejector can be made using a similar pattern but instead you replace the copper plates with the lead plates and you get the reactor waste ejector. Now the fuel inserter will get the fuel in and the waste ejector will get the fuel out of the reactor. So replace one of the excess hatches with the fuel inserter and another one of the hatches with the waste ejector. Remember that they should be in the middle of the reactor like the excess hatches. Now one more thing, you can't use them to access the reactor. You can only use the reactor access hatch in order to do that. So now let's set up the reactor and yes, let's try to get our nuclear fuel or in our case the uranium fuel in the reactor using the access hatch. So if I try to connect it with the item duct from thermal expansion, you will see that the item duct doesn't actually connect to the rear inserter. Now that is because you need some sort of storage buffer in between. In my case, I'm going to use the iron quad. So the fuel inserter can actually take fuel from this iron quad. So here I have placed a servo and whitelist the fuel that you want to basically insert in the reactor. In my case, it is going to be uranium fuel. So I am going to whitelist the uranium fuel in the servo. And then once you apply the redstone signal here to the servo, this quad will start inserting the fuel in the reactor. So there goes our fuel and the reactor will have taken the fuel from the grid into itself. So there we go. So in this way you can automate the fuel supply in the reactor. Now let's start operating the reactor. And as you can see we have already started producing some steam. In order to get the steam out you can use the excess hatches. It's not necessary to connect it to the top of the reactor. Yes the excess hatches can be used to get the steam out like this. And once you do that the turbines will work just perfectly. So yeah, you can use the hatches in order to get water in or steam out, stuff like that. Now we are producing some depleted uranium fuel. And this is a waste that we can process in a centrifuge. And in order to get it out, we need the reactor waste ejector. But once again, we need to place a storage buffer in between. So as soon as I put a crate in here, you will see that the waste will automatically start depositing in this crate here. So once the waste is in the crate, we need to do a similar process like we did for the fuel insertion which is basically connect this crate to the spent fuel pool drum in order to cool this waste down as this waste is very hot right now. So I like to connect the inserting or I basically I like to insert the waste using the middle slot like this and I like to take the waste out from the bottom slot. So once you have connected it like this, just connect a servo and in the servo once again whitelist it with hot uranium fuel or basically the depleted uranium fuel so whitelist it properly otherwise this won't really work and once you have done that as soon as you set it to redstone signal basically ignored it will start depositing the depleted uranium fuel in the spent fuel pool drum now in order to make this whole thing work you need to submerge it in water so that is what i'm gonna do real quick and once this whole thing is submerged in water, the spent fuel pool drum will basically cool down the hot fuel. And we are just gonna wait 
until this process is done. So it's been some time and the hot uranium fuel has now cooled down into depleted uranium fuel which is ready to be recycled in the centrifuge for getting some useful products out of it. In order to do that we are going to connect the bottom of the spent fuel pool drum with the centrifuge and yeah I am going to use some night vision portion so that you can clearly see what is going on down there. So once you use the item ducts on the bottom of the spent fuel pool drums you will see that they are connected perfectly and that means that the spent fuel pool drum is actually able to output from the bottom side as most of the machines in HBM do. So once the connection is complete just interconnect all of these ducts and then extend them to the centrifuge. It doesn't really matter how you connect them but yeah what matters is that you bring them up to the centrifuge like this. Now if your pipes are interconnecting don't really worry about them as the hot and the cold fuel don't really mix in but if you can then try that these two pipes the one that bring the fuel in and the ones that take the fuel out don't really interconnect. Now on the uh, on the item duct that has the centrifuge on it basically connect a retriever and on the retriever set it or basically whitelist it with the cold depleted uranium fuel so that our centrifuge can basically pull in all the depleted fuel that is stored inside the spent fuel pool drums. So as soon as I turn off the redstone control, you will see that the centrifuge will start pulling in all the depleted uranium fuel that was stored inside the spent fuel pool drum. So as soon as the fuel cools down, the centrifuge is going to pull it to itself. So instead of placing four servos, you can just place a single retriever. And yeah, that is basically how you can automate your entire fuel input and output process and also processing now if you want to take it one step further then in order to automate the centrifuge just place a hopper on its bottom and the hopper will start pulling all the items or basically all the output items from the centrifuge and then just place a crate so all the items are deposited in this crate now from here you actually have two ways that you can take the easy way is to simply connect this crate to the normal crate or our input crate here so that we can store all the useful products in there. The other thing that you can do is you can use a sequential fabricator in order to make the plutonium fuel out of all the raw materials that we got from the centrifuge. So the centrifuge is going to give us reactor gate plutonium and also uranium 238. Both of these can be combined in order to make plutonium fuel. And that is what we are going to do using the two sequential fabricators that I showed you before. So set basically two different set of item ducts with servos on them. The first item duct is only going to extract reactor grade plutonium and uranium 238. And the other one as you can see here is going to extract technetium and also the tiny pile of nuclear fuel. So the first item duct goes in the first uh, the sequential fabricator. And as soon as the raw materials start going in, it will start producing some plutonium billets. And the plutonium billets can then go in the second fabricator and it will start producing ingots of plutonium fuel. And this plutonium fuel ingots can be then stored in our crate. Then you can take out another item duct from this crate and you can output this ingot of plutonium fuel in another nuclear reactor if you want to. So once you have connected all of the item ducts, everything will be deposited in this crate here. So that takes care of the fuel portion of the video. Now let's take a look on the reactor remote control block for monitoring and controlling the reactor and also some of the other neat things that it can do. So in order to use the control block, you need to shift right click with the reactor remote sensor and then place this sensor inside the remote control block. As soon as you do that, all the information about your reactor will be available in this block here. So it will show you the fuel levels, water, coolant, temperature, everything that you might need to know about the reactor. Another neat feature is the automatic shutdown. Once you enable the automatic shutdown feature, as soon as the temperature threshold reaches beyond a certain limit, your reactor will automatically shut down instead of being basically a meltdown. Now you can take out a redstone competitor signal from the reactor remote control block from any of its side. Now the strength of this signal will be dependent on the temperature of the reactor and this is pretty important. So for example, right now I have a redstone strength of 7. So if I go beyond 7, the redstone will basically just die out. Now I have a strength of 7 because my temperature is nearly 481 degrees Celsius. So let's see what happens when I take the temperature of the reactor down. 
so i'm going to pull the control rods to basically 60 percent and the temperature has went down to nearly 300 degrees celsius and now we only have a strength of five so the strength of the redstone is dependent on the strength or basically the temperature at which your reactor is running at now using this fact we can make a really neat setup for a siren so let's say that i want to activate a siren as soon as the temperature reaches beyond 400 degrees celsius which is basically seven strength of redstone so i'm going to lay down a redstone line and make sure that your comparator is in subtract mode for this so once you have laid down the redstone line and this line has a strength of six if i am correct and yeah so okay yeah so it will have a strength of six when it will reaches the comparator and as the comparator is right now taking a signal of six six minus six is zero now as soon as i raise the temperature of the reactor the strength of the signal will become seven so seven minus six is one so in this way you can activate a siren or basically any redstone contraption that you want to as soon as the temperature reaches a beyond or basically beyond a certain threshold so in my case i'm going to just use a siren and yeah for now the siren won't activate but as soon as i make the reactor run full throttle there we go so in this way you can basically experiment yourself to see at which temperature how much is the redstone strength available and yeah you can basically make a very neat siren setup now another thing that you can do is basically make a visual setup using some repeaters and some redstone lamps now the repeaters need to be placed alternate like this so that they don't power each other when they are placed side by side so right now i have a signal strength of six available and as i raise the temperature one of, one more lamp will light up so in a similar way you won't really need to look at the control block or the reactor to see at what temperature your reactor is running at so yeah those are some of the things that you can do with the reactor remote control block and yeah i'm pretty sure that you guys are more creative than me and you will come up with something which is even more neat so that was all i had for this video i hope you guys liked it if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this peace out my guys